Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the town hall part of the day. This is usually when we entice you to stay with uh, some free lunch or something, but uh, now we're all virtual, so <laughs> you had to get your own snack today. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty impressed. There's quite a few people that stayed. Uh, there, we have like 125 people still on, so that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start today. Um, we're going to talk about some awards, and then Julie's going to do like an update. And uh, you guys can feel free to type in questions at any time. <clears throat> and we'll do like a question answer period at the end. Uh, the whole board's online here today. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So feel free to uh, type your questions at any time. Um, in case you did just tune in, I'll let you know uh, you have been muted by the organizer and there's you can't accidentally turn on your webcam or your microphone, so that's good. But uh, yeah, you just use the question box um, on the right side of your screen. Um, I feel like that's it. Um, but I'm gonna throw it back to Rebecca first. She's gonna talk about uh, the awards, and then and then Julie will come on to do her update. Um, yeah, Rebecca, take it. <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Um, so this year we've had the pleasure of giving out two awards, the Young Professional Award and the Gianna McDonald Award. Um, the Young Professional Award is presented to an MRT that is relatively new in their career, usually practicing for less than 10 years. This, a uh, recipient of this award must demonstrate a positive impact to the profession through initiatives such as committee and volunteer work and ongoing professional development. The recipient should also demonstrate a passion for lifelong learning and is able to promote a positive and collaborative working environment. This year, we're happy to present this award to Megan Donovan. Megan's been working as a radiological technologist and mammographer at the Colchester East Hans Health Center in Truro since 2013. During this time, uh, Megan's made a positive impact on our profession through committee involvement and has been formally recognized at her hospital for her exceptional teamwork and patient care skills. She's also committed to professional development with a certificate in adult education and enrollment in a master's of health science, as well as recently submitting a research proposal for um, breast density notification and supplemental breast imaging in Nova Scotia. The Gianna McDonald Award is presented to a practicing sonographer who embraces the values of patient advocacy, patient care, and compassion. The recipient of this award is nominated by their co-workers who feel that the sonographer demonstrates these values in a con um, in consistent and exemplary patient care. This year, we're happy to present this award to Brenda Robichaud. Brenda's been practicing at a as a, sonogra as a sonographer sorry, at Yarmouth Regional Hospital since year 2000. She's known for consistently displaying a warm, calm, upbeat and professional demeanor throughout her career. No matter the circumstances, she always keeps her focus on the need of each individual patient and she puts patient at, patients at ease with her open and warm nature. Brenda's fluent in both English and French and converses in whichever language the patient is most comfortable. One of Brenda's most significant and long lasting in, impacts has been mentoring many students for many years. Through this mentorship, she leads by example, and as a result, Brenda has passed on a focus of exemplary patient care to these students. So congratulations, and really a tremendous job to both Megan and Brenda. Um, okay, so I think now I turn it over to Julie. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm going to uh, update everyone on what the college has been doing since proclamation. I'd love to say that my presentation will be as engaging as Mark's, but that would be a lie. Uh, and I so the, for the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll give you an update and then we'll open the question, the floor to any questions any of you may have. Most of our board is online, so you can ask questions of any of us. First, we'd like to continue with just a note of appreciation, and that is to recognize some volunteers that have recently finished their terms on the board or, or committees. Each of these people have contributed to 
the organization of the NSMRT, NSSDMS, or the new college, the Nova Scotia College of Medical Imaging. And we need to recognize that without the work and labors of volunteers, the work of the college could not be done. In addition, we want to actually put a special thanks out to everybody over the past 10 years for the boards, the committees, the task for, uh, committee, because we recognize while we reached a momentous occasion of proclamation, we didn't do that just this year. This has been a work of over a 10 year span and all the volunteers of the past 10 years have contributed to where we are today. And we want to send that thank you out to all of you. So as of September 8th, we had an interim board. This consists of the board members from the previous NSSDMS and the previous NSMRT. And here we have them listed as what their current roles are, the board are, and where they came from. In addition, right after proclamation, we were appointed three public members, which is very exciting for us. We haven't had a public member on our board since the 1980s, and we welcome three public members for a three-year term. The interim board is in place until we do our first elections. And at, at election time, the entire board will be re-elected with the exception of the public members. We have actually just sent out um, the nominations process. And uh, we ask that um, if you're interested to put your name forth, we're looking for nominations to be in by the this Friday, this coming Friday. We want to be mine registrants that you do not need to be living in Halifax to be on the board. Our current board members, we have one that's from um, Truro, one that's from the Glasgow area, one that's from the Cape Breton area. So you do not need to live in the HRM to be to be able to be part of the board. All our meetings are held virtually. There may be the odd time when we need people to come in person for a meeting and if that occurs, we pay for any costs associated with that travel. This year, we will be electing six positions as every position is up for re-election. Typically, the election is a three-year term, so the positions would be three-year term, but as this is the inaugural board and we need to um, make sure that we don't have our board turning over every six years in full, we will be actually electing two positions for a three-year term, two positions for a two-year term, and two positions for a one-year term. The nominations process was e-blasted out a couple of weeks ago. However, a new reminder one will be going out on November the 9th. So uh, watch your email this week. If you're interested, we really encourage you to put your name forth. Moving on to how proclamation has impacted us. On the registration basis, we have seen a couple changes. First of all, we have um, two new groups. One clearly new group was sonographers. Sonographers have never been registered with us before. So there we have approximately 130 practicing sonographers in the province that are now part of our uh, jurisdiction. The other group is MRI. While they have been licensed with us for a number of years, they actually have not been in part of our legislation. So now they are part of that and they're licensed with us due to a uh, legal requirement rather than an employer requirement, which makes things much easier for us uh, when dealing with any MRI issues because we have clear jurisdiction in that area now. For the registrants, you'll see that a couple of things have changed in the process. One would be that we now require professional liability insurance. Professional liability insurance can be purchased from a private provider or it can also be, uh, the requirement can be fulfilled by having a membership with either Sonography Canada, CMRT, or OAMRS. Uh, any of those three or organizations, when you apply for membership with them, you can have PLI added with to that membership, which will fulfill our requirements. So each year now you will need to, when you renew, you will need to upload a PLI number and you will get that from whichever organization you get your PLI through. The other thing that has changed with the registration process is vulnerable sector checks are now required for new registrants. They, um, they take a couple of weeks. So if you're lucky to get vulnerable sector checks as right now, almost all the sonographers are having to do, it can take two to four weeks to get that uh, done. 
you would typically also need to have a form to take to with you for that. So that is online. If you go under registration requirements on the website, there's a link to the forms that you need, or you can reach out directly to the info line and we'll send it out to you. Operationally, we there is not a lar large change. The only uh, difference really on an operational basis that the proclamation has brought forth is that the position of the executive director was moved to a full-time position. So instead of 30 hours a week, it is now 40 hours a week. I also forgot to mention for going back to registration, the other large change is uh, there's no mandate to belong to CMRT any longer. It's a if you choose to, you can, but uh, previously under our legislation, every MRT was required to belong to CMRT to practice and license in the province. That's no longer the case, so now it's an option. And uh, because it is an option and because we have stenographers who wouldn't belong to CMRT but would opt for Stenography Canada as well, we will no longer be collecting dues on their behalf. So um, starting this year, you need to be paying for those as two separate entities. For the group that did do payroll deduction this year where we actually had already collected CMRT dues, that dues has been for, has been forwarded to CMRT directly and uh, they, along with the list of names, and they're being renewed automatically with CMRT unless the individual reaches out to CMRT and asks for a refund. For practice, there's actually a larger issue, larger uh, impact. And then when we look at practice, I just want to review what documents actually inform our practice for registrants. The act and the regulations are the legal entity that gives the college, the shows, delineates for the college where our jurisdiction is and what our powers are. The act and the regulations are set by government and we don't get to change them. If we want to change anything in the act and regulations, we have to put an ask towards government to government and that's time consuming as you're all aware the act and this new act and regulations that have just been proclaimed took us over a decade to get through so it's not something that's changed lightly or quickly bylaws are constructed and developed by the the board and the board can choose to change the bylaws they are currently uh, for the college the new college bylaws we hope to have them approved in our next board meeting which is next week Policies are also developed by the staff and by the committees of the college. And really the policies outline how uh, processes are followed and latitudes of um, behavior that are allowed. These are, while they're developed by the committees or the staff, they are approved by the board. And again, at the next board meeting, we plan on having the policies that are college related policies approved on mass. So they should be uh, live by next week. The ones that are more pertinent to the MRTs on a daily basis in their practice would be your national competency profile, your standards of practice and your code of ethics. The national competency profile delineates what are the minimum standards to practice or that we expect you to attain to enter practice. They're not where you stop developing, it's where you, where you are at the beginning of your career when you first graduate. It's expected that those national competency profiles that we grow from there. The standards of practice and the code of ethics are developed by the college itself and they are on our website. If there's ever a practice advisory question when we receive those, or if there's any complaints that come in, it's your national competency profile, your standards of practice and your code of ethics that the college is gonna be referring back to, to help delineate or decide whether uh, MRT is meeting the, the standards that would be, be expected of them. Moving on to what have we done in the first 90 days here of uh, licensure since the proclamation. We have onboarded 130, actually probably 140 sonographers, 130 in the province, and then we have sonographers from other provinces who are trying to come in through grandfathering in so that they will be able to maintain their ability to return to Nova Scotia later in their careers if they wish. But we have reviewed about 140 sonographers' uh, registrations and uh, onboarded them. We've instituted some new graduate licensing. So now new graduate technologists can license uh, while they are awaiting to write their exam with provisional, um, a provisional license that 
allows them to do most aspects of the position, but uh, uh, guarantees that there is some oversight so that the public is protected. We've also on, um, we rolled out a brand new website for the college. It, there are aspects of, that are still under development. Most of it's been populated, but we can expect that the areas that haven't been populated will be, will have that completed within the next few months. We've also done some large changes to the registration platform to upgrade the language and the processes to the requirements of the college. And in within a few weeks of proclamation, we went through renewal. So we now have 730 people in the renewal process. About 600 of you have actually completed that process in full. We have about um, 70 of you that are in the process. You've applied, um, but it hasn't been um, approved yet. And then we have about 70 that haven't um, renewed in any form yet. On top of that, we've also reviewed all the elections process. Uh, the election, the nominations committee has gone through and updated the elections process and we've done the call out for the nominations. We've held an Atlantic conference the week after proclamation and now we're holding this fall education uh, just several weeks after proclamation. In the next six months, we, we still have a lot of work to do. We will have go through our first audit. Our year end has changed. It was February 28th. It will now be December 31st. So this year will actually be a 10 month year instead of a full year. And in the past, we've done financial reviews. We are now moving to a full audit annually and we will now begin to file a um, non-for-profit information return. So we can expect that that will be a higher workload for us. And right now we're, because uh, it's becoming up to year end, we're working through the budget process for next year. We need to add, because MRI is now uh, legislated in the province as well as sonography, uh, we need to add those to the mobility agreements under FERPA so that those individuals, if they move from one regulated jurisdiction to another regulated jurisdiction, they have mobility through that free registration, I mean, a Fair Registration Practices Act. We also need to add MRI and sonography to the accreditation process. So within Nova Scotia, the, co the college um, is a stakeholder, obviously, in the accreditation process of the education programs. And Previously, we were not listed for sonography or MRI because they were not within our jurisdiction. Now they are, so they, we need to uh, develop those agreements with HSO. We are in the process of uh, getting together HR meetings with IWK and Nova Scotia Health Authority to review criteria for hiring to ensure that uh, anyone's being, being hired into MIRTP roles. Uh, are meeting the necessary minimum um, licensing requirements before they're hired. We're asking, to, we are in the process of also developing a YouTube channel. And the idea here will be that we'll now have a fixed link that uh, registrants can use for any of our educational webinars that we do develop, rather than having to give out separate links to separate videos that one link will be a, a fixed link that they can open and the, the menu of webinars that are available will be there. And over the next few months, we will start working on name changes. Uh, it's, so that's with all our stakeholders that we have contracts with or agreements with or platforms that we use, we will slowly start trying to uh, eliminate that, the NSMRT name and have everything switched over to the college name. A little further down the road, we are looking uh, two projects that we are looking to do in the next year or so would be the refresher programs and the jurisprudence modules. These are larger projects. Uh, we will have to, we have two refresher programs right now that need to be updated to the new competency profiles that have come out, and we need to look at the other three disciplines to look at uh, do a needs assessment and then decide if we are going to be developing um, refresher programs for them. And then once these are developed whichever programs are developed, then we need to get those vetted on a national level to hopefully do the same thing as what we currently are doing and have them accepted by all the regulators. And therefore, we, it gets uh, picked up by across the country and not just within Nova Scotia. And we're also going to develop a jurisprudence module. This will uh, be an educational module to ensure that registrants are aware of their legal requirements under law in the province of Nova Scotia. 
So it will look to the different acts that govern our practice. It will be what you would call, um, an, it's an, it will be an important test, but not a high risk exam. So if someone, the idea would be that we want to ensure that registrants are aware of their legal responsibilities. So if they were to go in and do the readings, write the exam, and not pass it, then they would be redirected back to do some further reading and come back and redo the exam. So it's not going to be looked at something to prevent someone from registering. It's just something that we want to develop to ensure that uh, registrants actually understand what their legal requirements under the law are for practice. In addition, when we look at communication, um, there are several ways we communicate right now. We have our website, we have our email, we also send out e-blasts and noodles letters. Uh, we have a new Facebook page already developed. You can also reach us through phone. NSS DMS and NSMRT addresses, so anything that was an NSMRT address should now automatically boot you to the new college site. So if you try to go into the old NSMRT website, you're, you shouldn't be able to access this. It should automatically take you to the new college website. The NSS DMS website is still live, but it will, uh, I believe it's only for the next 30 days that it's live. Jennifer can speak to that if I'm incorrect. Uh, as well as their live, um, their email address is still live. And we are gonna be looking at trying to ping their, that email address to uh, college email as well, so that we, in the switchover, if someone's using an old email address, that we still get the information and it doesn't get lost. And the links to, the, also I mentioned the links to videos. We are doing the plenary session today that we did, but the stream specific talks are all being pre-recorded. We are just receiving them this week and over the weekend, I will get them posted to YouTube. And on Monday, I will be posting links on the website under the events tab to each of those uh, lectures and they will be available on demand. So that's a quick, review of what we've been up to in the last 30 days, six, or I should say 90 days. And uh, if you have any questions, please, or if Jennifer or, or with, um, Chrissy, do you have anything to add to that? Hey, everyone. Um, hold on, let me see. Can I share my webcam? Yes, you can. Um, okay, for some reason it's not, showing me i think but anyway um the only thing to add was that the nss dms uh website is actually going to be expiring in january so um it's still open until then but we do have a link um to forward everybody to the uh to the college website which is where you should be getting most of your information from anyway so if you, yeah, if you have any questions, you can put them into the uh, question box. If not, then we do have one question, Julie. Um, so far, mm -hmm. and it's can we view more than our discipline-specific lecture that you're posting online for CME credits? For example, I have trained as a sonographer, and although I'm not practicing in that capacity, I suspect there may be interesting subjects that I might wish. To wish to further my knowledge in. Yep. Absolutely. Again, as when it comes to CPD, uh, the college is not defining what is relevant to in an individual's practice. We're leaving you to self-reflect on what is relevant to your practice. And as long as you can, uh, when you do a CPD, um, when you're recording something for CPD, as long as you can reflect on how this relates to your practice or how you might utilize it to um, be thoughtful about your practice, that's what matters. So we're not gonna define that. And definitely, there is definitely arguments that can be made about understanding what is happening in other disciplines that can help you better deliver your own care to patients or deliver, do your job in other respects. Hey, we had a comment that Mark's ebook, um, the link isn't working, so we'll follow up with him on that to see if there might okay. be a problem on that end. Okay. Um, yeah. Another question, can you give us an update on the CMRT Atlantic? I, I 
can't. Uh, I haven't heard anything else. Christy, have you heard anything else on that? Uh, no, there's there's a meeting coming up uh, for those Atlantic reps and uh, just wait for information to come out from Sierra Matif. Yeah, I think that I think they plan on having some more communication uh, and voting sometime in the spring, but that's the last I heard. Mm -hmm. Is any any other concerns or questions? Nothing popping up, but if someone has a long question, you can start by just sending incoming so that we know it's on the way. And uh, always remember that if you do have a question at any time, you can reach out to the info line. So, um, yes. And our info line is typically, just so you are aware, it says a couple days. Uh, our admin person works Tuesdays and Thursdays, so, and she handles most of the basic inquiries through the info line. So if it's a few days hearing back, it's likely just a day. If you e emailed on a Friday, you might not hear it till Tuesday. And she's also the one handling most of the renewals again. So uh, it's why on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you see a large number being processed. If you have any sonographers that haven't done their renewals, you might want to, um, if you hear them saying they haven't done that yet, first of all, everybody who hasn't submitted an application for renewals now consider it late doing so, but uh, the ones who need to get a vulnerable sector check, they there is another issue of time sensitivity there because uh, definitely I'm hearing back that it's two to four weeks from the police department to get those results. And your application cannot be completed until we get those results. We have another question that just popped up. Um, okay. How will today's attendance be recorded? Um, again, we have every, we have um, anybody who's online, we can see it. We can see when you log in, we can see when you log out. Okay, uh, so we have a record of whether you attended or not. Um, you have two choices when you're looking at CPD for this, this event. Only 50% of your CPD has to be what they call verifiable. The other 50% doesn't have to be because we, we understand that always having proof of everything is can be difficult to attain for certain uh, events. So you can put it in and just record it. Uh, then, um, or you can reach out to the info line and ask just for a certificate of attendance and she'll send you a certificate of attendance. And she'll use the login page from the webinar to verify that you are in attendance. If you joined in a group and you're not listed, um, you, you, you have to have a sign-in sheet of some form or some proof to get that certificate. Okay, another question here. Um, I need to have the PLI issues confirmed. Does the college require members to have PLI? Yes. Absolutely, you have to have PLI. Where you get it is your option, okay? And uh, you are and can get it from a private insurer. So you do not have to belong to Sonography Canada or CMRT or AMRS, it's not a legal requirement. Um, I would say that our, we have tried ourselves, we had a board member try to apply for private insurance and that's a difficult process. Uh, so it's not likely something that's a very, although you you can, freely do that, it's probably not an option that's going to be easily done. And I don't think it's an option that will end up being cheaper than an, a membership with one of the other organizations. Over time, there may be other options that come along for, for PLI. What won't happen is us getting involved. Um, the college will not, has no plans of uh, being a seller of PLI to its registrants. So you'll have to get it from a third party inside us. Okay, just a follow-up comment. So it, it makes sense for members to stay with CMRT in that respect. Yes. A matter of fact, I will actually say, because this is something new, uh, we will actually be auditing this this year. So in January, the um, CMRT's uh, 
anyone who puts CMRT down as their PLI coverage will get audited in January and we'll send off a list to verify that they actually do have CMRT membership. And then in April, we will audit those who put Sonography Canada down as because they run a different year. They run from, eight, from March to April. Oh, March. Yeah, so we will we'll do those on their new renewal time and uh, we will, anyone who's putting Sonography Canada down, we will verify that they have that. For the first year, we're not gonna do that every year, um, but for this first year, we just want to make sure that everyone is understanding what that that is. So in the renewal period where they put it in, we're doing it on, a, uh, we're assuming that they're being truthful, um, but we're gonna audit that one item and the, uh, then on a go forth basis, it would just be part of the auditing process for the 10% that gets audited when we do the CPD. And our, we, we'd be auditing their PLI and their, um, and their currencies and their CPD. So it would be a full audit of their profile. Okay, I have two questions that I'm just gonna roll into one. How many CPD credits will be given for today? And does today's conference count um, separate from the discipline specific webinars or do they all count as one? No, so you'd have an hour for marks and an hour for this. So they would each be one CPD with credit, right? And your discipline specific would be separate, so. Can we? Can yeah. anyone recall what the uh, credit, what a half day um, conference would be worth in credits, like what today's would be worth? As I say, Mark was one hour, so his would be one hour, one CPD credit, and mine's one hour, so it'd be one CPD credit. Okay, so and two, two in total for today. Yeah, yeah. Two in total. Okay. And is my NSC MIRTP number the same as my old NSA MRT number? Yes, yes. So on a legal basis, the while NSMRT, uh, what we're now a college, for operational and legal reasons how it happened is uh, we kept our business number as a legal entity. We're just doing a name change, but we're the same legal entity as NSMRT. Uh, so that allowed for um, a much easier transition for us in that, that uh, we didn't have to shut down bank accounts and things like that. We just went on with uh, any agreements that were in place, any accounts that were in place. Uh, it was just written in that it was it went forward under the new name and that that gives us time to do name change over and everything like that. Whereas NSSDMS uh, actually shut down their business now. Okay. okay, will the payroll deduction this forthcoming year also be the CAMRT renewal amount or will we be paying that separately in the future? So you'll be paying it separately in the future, but it is my understanding and I have given the information to CMRT and I believe Snog Freak, uh, Jennifer, you can answer this one, but I believe Sonography Canada does payroll deduction already. Um, but CMRT is looking at offering payroll deduction and, and, and setting that up. So you would be doing, if that's successful, you can still do everything through payroll deduction, but you'd have two separate sources of payroll deduction, one for the college and one for Sonography Canada or CMRT. That is correct, Julie. Sonarchy Canada does do payroll deduction as well, but you have to yeah. set it up that way. Yeah, so that, that option is available to people that you can do. And I believe CMRT also lets you do installment payments to, directly to them. So there's like several options with CMRT. So if you uh, just reach out to them directly, they can uh, make sure you're getting the accurate information on how to set that up. But I know that they were lucky and they asked for our contact and they were lucky to set up the option of payroll deduction for uh, Nova Scotia members. Okay, um, how do I register to receive newsletters and e-blasts via email? It's, they go to whatever email you are registered under. So um, there's always a, there's, when you, someone who's a brand new, brand new applicant, um, there is, there could be a week or so where they're not on the email list because I have to import that list to MailChimp. Um, so I have to develop a whole new list um, anytime there's a change. So there's always a risk that when you first join, there might be a week or two that you're not on the list. But otherwise, you you get it to whatever email you are registered under. That's where all the, your e-blasts go. 
Now, because it's coming from MailChimp, depending on how your safety is set in your e, e your email folders, it may go to trash, it may go to junk. So you might want to check that out to make sure that it's considered a safe sender. And if you're not still getting it, then reach out to me and I'll check out why. But uh, it's in, lot, in many cases, it's just that they're checking the wrong email. And the email you have on file with us as your primary email should be the email that you're checking regularly. The other thing is if you, um, if you're using a work email and then you're going, you know, and you're off, off for a period of time or you have no access to that, um, that's problematic too. So just make sure, sure that uh, if uh, that happens that uh, you no longer have access to a particular email that you update your profile. Okay, next one is, can you recall the number of CPD credits awarded for the June virtual education? Was that a half day or a full day event? I can't recall offhand. Um, uh, if, it was uh, half day, if it was a half day, it's two. If it was a full day, it's four. Yeah. So, but if they email to the info line, um, they can find out for sure how much that was. I just, I just don't want to misspeak without looking back. So it's for consistency. I feel like it was three. Oh, go ahead. Did somebody know what they got? I feel like it was three because there was Nicole and um, one, two. Yes, it was. Yeah. And then the AGM, so three in total. Yeah, I, I believe it was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do we manually submit this ourselves for today's yes. credits or will you yeah. be transferring no. attendance to each person's no. profile? No, we will. There are 730 of you. We will not be uploading anything for anybody. It's up to you to maintain your own CPD profiles. Okay, for those of us that, sorry, so I, go ahead. Um, there is, and it was sent out, and it will, once we get that YouTube channel up, uh, there is a tutorial on how to enter your CPD credits available. I think it's on there. If you have, uh, if, if you're having, if you're struggling on any uploading. Okay, for those of us that paid through Nova Scotia Health payroll and submitted the $675, Will CMRT send us a receipt for that portion? Um, they should. Yeah, they should. So if if uh, if um, if it, or you, it may even be online once they do your renewals, they will not have done. I, we just sent them the list so that they know who's on it, but we haven't sent them the monies yet. So there's going to be a delay because we just got the monies from Nova Scotia Health yesterday. Uh, so that money has not yet gone to CMRT, and that that would be your leg. Um, but they should be able to, they should send you a receipt and if not, then reach out to them directly. Okay, would this fall under lecture in CPD for both hours today or would it be under attend, attend a conference slash AGM? This would be lecture, webinar. Okay, that looks like all the questions for right now. If anyone has a last minute one, you can type incoming or um, any follow-up questions can go to info at nscmirtp.ca. Okay. So I think, yeah, Do, does any other board members have anything they wish to add? You guys have, I put you guys into the uh, presenter mode so you guys have the ability to print, uh, use your cameras and your mics. So we're all okay. okay. I think that's it then. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out on their Saturday morning to come. And I think Mark was definitely a, a very engaging speak, speaker. To listen to this morning and I'm hoping that uh, that you're able to share the basic information that I shared with you and uh, again um, we're hoping to try to get accurate timely information out and just to remind you that uh, to to interact with the emails that we do send well, it is our responsibility as a college to do timely accurate transparent communication with you 
However, as a registrant, it is your responsibility to remain informed when we share it. So if we send the information out and, and you don't engage in it and something comes up and it was it, it's saying that I didn't read, it wouldn't be a reason for um, you not to be responsible for the information that it contains. Okay. There's a final question. Will a copy of these questions and answers be posted anywhere? And the answer is, I think Julie will send out a link of this whole recording that you, anybody can play back and watch for three months. I think it'll be available. Yes. So this the this one, what I'll do is, um, yeah, uh, the my presentation, I will send out the question answer stuff. I will just put out as a, this was the question, this was the answer. It's a little easier than um, having to listen through it all. Mark Blacks, he has given us consent. He's a professional speaker, so the, the rules are a little different. We have to have written agreements with them, and he has given us consent to share his speech uh, virtually afterwards. However, it can't go on any public um, platform, so it has to stay on our platform, which creates an issue. We can send out a link to it. That link's good for 30 days, and then it will break, and then we would have to send, we'll send out a new link after that. So there, when we send that e-blast out for the, the links to the um, stream-specific talks, those ones will be links that stay forever, basically, until we take them down, but the one to marks will be a time-sensitive link. Okay, and okay. for anyone interested in the chat, I did post a link that Chrissy gave me and um, that should take you to the employer payroll deduction for CMRT membership dues. So okay. if anyone wants to sign up for um, payroll deduction of their CMRT dues going forward, they can click that link. Yeah. Okay. And again, if you, a question does come up in the after this, feel free to reach out at any time. Okay. So I think that's, so, yeah, I, so with nothing else then, I will let everyone go and enjoy the rest of their weekend. And thank you very much for your attendance. Okay.